So this is a really exciting episode. I've just discovered a brand new tool in DaVinci Resolve. I've just used it on a job. I can't wait to show you how it works. So let's get straight into it. All right, the shot you're looking at here, this has been shot on 16 mil film. We get that beautiful tones in here. We've got that beautiful rich reds. And this is really only achieved using analog film. So we are always trying to, in our digital world, emulate that and get as close as we can to this gorgeous look that we've got here. But you get these really beautiful, dense reds. I'm gonna show you how I do that traditionally, and then I'm gonna show you this brand new tool that I've just discovered. This has been shot S-Log3. So this is Sony S-Log3. I've got here my traditional sort of uh, workflow. So I've got a CST at the beginning, taking me from Sony S-Log3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then at the end, I'm going DaVinci Wide Gamut down to Rec. 709. And everything in the middle is basically working DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. All right, so we're working in a nice, large color space. Now, there are many ways to achieve that sort of film look. At the end here, I've got my Kodak 2383 LUT. I'm using a Dehancer to do that. You can use the one that's built into DaVinci Resolve. And the best way to get those reds looking not like this, but more like this, is to start using the curves. So I'm gonna go down to my curves here and I'm gonna go straight to this one, which is hue versus loom. And let me show you what I would do here. So we want a nice broad selection. So I'm not going to actually sample her red coat here. I'm gonna take the red here. And I'm just gonna start pulling this down and we get that really nice dense red that we're kind of getting on the phone here. So you can see that's working really well. But we also need to be careful in here because our hue versus loom curve here is actually affecting skin tones. But I have now discovered a brand new tool. So let me show you the difference with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new version of this. If you don't know how to do that, what I'm basically doing is going to here, color, I'm gonna say grade version, I'm gonna say add. And what that will do is it will copy the node structure that I've got already and do a new version so I can compare them side by side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that hue versus luminance uh, movement that we've just done on the curves and I'm gonna apply this new effect. All right, so what is this new effect? If we come to our effects, which you'll find just here, and down here, there's one called DCTL. Now, DCTL stands for DaVinci Color Transform Language, and it basically allows programmers, developers, uh, particularly color scientists, to access all the tools in DaVinci Resolve and make their own effects. So this is what I've just discovered. So this is fantastic. So a DCTL is installed a little bit like a LUT. So by default, if I drag this on to a node, it will just say none because I haven't got any DCTLs installed. Now, what I've done is I've downloaded a DCTL from a site called mononodes.com. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. And a really smart guy called Stefan Ringeschwantner has designed this fantastic DCTL called ColorShift. He's got two or three on his site actually, but ColorShift is the one that I've been playing with. So let me just show you quickly how to install it and then I'm gonna show you how fantastic it works. All right, so I'm gonna go down to my Finder. So I've downloaded the zip files from Stefan's site and I'm left with these two files. So I've got Mono Color Shift version two and Mono Color Shift version two NE. Now the NE stands for non-emoji. The icons, when you install this as a DCTL, the icons that are there are actually emojis. And Stefan's found a small bug that some of the panels will disconnect if you use the emojis. So he's got a non-emoji version, which works 100%. I've been using the one with emojis and it's not doing any problems with my panel at all. My panel's working absolutely fine. I've done a full job with this already. So anyway, you need to install these in the LUTs folder. These are not LUTs, but that's where they sit. So how do you find the LUTs folder? The easiest way is go to your settings, go to your color management, and down here, you've got open LUT folder. And then what you can do is literally drag and drop these into that folder. Now I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. And then you need to restart DaVinci Resolve. You must restart the system. And then once you've restarted DaVinci Resolve, your DCTL list will be populated. So down here, I've got all the ones that I've downloaded. So the, the color shift pack that I've downloaded has got about 10 different DCTLs in there. The first main one that I've been using, and the one that I'm excited about, is this one called Density, all right? And this is a really quick way of getting these reds look like this. All right, so let me show you. I've got two, I've got mono density T, this is version 2.1, and mono density just straight. The T stands for tetrahedral. So that is the color maths, the color model that it's working in when it's doing its calculations, okay? Now there's no right or wrong one to use. I've checked this with Stefan, and you basically, they both have a slightly different effect. You choose the one to suit. All right, so I'm gonna go for mono density T, 
and up comes this. Now, these are the emojis that I was talking about, okay? They look like just regular icons, but they're actually emojis. So what we've now got is these fantastic, easy to use six vector sliders, okay? And all I've got to do is go to my red density and literally start moving this down and look at those colors going. So I'm matching this phone. These look absolutely fantastic with just one slider. So this is allowing me to do what I was doing with the Hue versus Loom and some of the other tools that I'd have to do, but it just looks much more natural. It looks like film. So this is what I was getting excited about. Now, the other thing that's happening, if I just get rid of the phone now, I think you'll all agree that this is a very good dense red. You're not losing saturation. You're keeping that really rich filmic look. Now I'm gonna take that off. And what is happening, if I just enable and disable this node, is it's actually affecting her face here, okay? So we need to be careful of that. So what you can do is come down to the bottom here and you've got this thing called deep. And if I move this slider up, it basically starts excluding highlights from the maths, as it were. All right, so as I move this up, and then I can adjust my density accordingly. And now if I enable and disable this, it's not affecting so much of her skin tone. So we're getting this beautiful, rich, deep reds. Now, if I compare this to the version that we did with our Hue versus Luminance, you'll see the difference. So I'm just gonna use my panel to do that. That's with Hue versus Loom, and this is with the DCTL. There's a big difference in just how this actually looks on here. It's fantastic. And this is just one of the 10 different DCTLs that you get in here. Stefan has also done a full episode on his YouTube channel that explains exactly how each of these sliders work. So go ahead and have a look at that. You can also download a free demo version of it so you can try it out. It is watermarked, but you can try it out and see if you like it. And Stefan has also given me a discount code here, which I'm gonna pass on to you at the end of this episode. So if you're interested in buying it, you can get yourself a discount. But let me just show you another tip with this. So I'm gonna to go to my next clip. And again, I'm going to take this DCTL. I'm going to drag and drop it on here. It's best to work with the DCTLs in a wider color space. You want to be working in a large color space. So you want to be working in Arri wide gamut, Aces, DaVinci wide gamut, something like that. It will work in Rec. 709 color space, but the sliders tend to be quite aggressive. So you really want to be in a larger color space. So again, here I've got my input. This is Arri Alexa going to DaVinci wide gamut. My nodes in the middle are all working in DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then I'm going DaVinci Wide Gamut back down to Rec. 709. If you don't follow this, have a look at my episodes on uh, using CSTs. All right, so let's have a look at one of the other ones. If I come down here, we've also got this one called Hue Shift. All right, so what we can do is we can look at his jacket here and maybe make it a little bit more cyan. So I've got here, I can do a cyan Hue Shift. I'm just moving this like this. But there's a more intelligent one than that, so I'm gonna reset that and I'm gonna select this one here. Now what this one does is it gives me all the options already. So I've got cyan to blue, blue to cyan. This is the one I want to use. So I'm gonna move this slider and you get a much more pleasing look than I would if I use the hue versus hue tool. So let me show you that. So this is using the blue to cyan. Okay, I'm gonna do another version. I'm gonna disable that one and then go to my hue versus hue tool. I'm gonna sample his jacket. And we're going to move it up. And you can see that the jump to cyan, you actually get this almost greeny. You get a sort of much more green tint on it. Let me just spread that out a little bit more to be fair. But the cyan is not quite as pleasing as it is using the DCTL. So these DCTLs have been designed with color science in mind. Stefan is a color scientist. He knows what he's doing. He's a DaVinci Resolve master trainer as well. And they are designed to also work with look development. So the nice thing with this is you would have your DCTL somewhere near the end of your, um, your node tree and you would be working underneath that. So that would be part of your look development. So you can see why I'm getting so excited about this new tool. That density feature is absolutely fantastic. Now, Stefan has given me a 10% discount code to pass on to you. If you type the word Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, at the checkout, you'll get 10% off any of his DCTLs. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Stefan for actually developing this DCTL in the first place and making all my projects look so much better moving forward. Give it a try, look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.